I rise today as a point of personal privilege because I am aggrieved, deeply aggrieved. Yesterday on this House floor, members and I listened to an outrageous resolution in which questionable statistics and fiery hyperbole were hurled at immigrants trying to legally cross the border into the United States. I am an immigrant, and those words cut into my soul. Mr. Speaker, my family and I moved to this country when I was young. My parents worked hard to provide my brother and I a life of opportunity while contributing mightily to the tax base of Jefferson County as their businesses thrived and prospered and continue to do so today. More to the point, I'm an immigration attorney and I'm intimately familiar with our laws and policies. There is no crisis at the border. The numbers cited yesterday are so devoid of context as to be rendered entirely meaningless. We are demonizing people legally seeking asylum. We are demonizing immigrant families and children. So Mr. Speaker, when I heard the resolution, I was offended. And when I saw that the resolution was adopted without a voice or electronic vote, I was shocked. But when I realized that this three and a half page document was to be sent to the United States Congress as unanimously supported by the entire Kentucky General Assembly, I was enraged to have my name on a document zealously praising the president and ICE while blaming good men and women for fictitious and fantastic crime sprees is egregious. Painting all immigrants with the same criminal brush as murderers, rapists, gang members, and thieves, as that resolution so gleefully does, reinforces the fear and hate mongering that is rising in our country today. As a proud immigrant, I cannot stand for it, and I ask that my name be removed from the resolution to be mailed to the United States Congress. I now yield to the gentleman from Kenton 65. Chair recognizes the gentleman from Kenton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to the honorable representative from Jefferson 40. You know, this morning, I uh, was driving south towards Frankfurt, and coming the opposite direction was an emergency vehicle. It was a, an ambulance from Owen County EMS. And re lawfully and respectfully, cars got out of the way as the ambulance passed. And I can tell you as a person who res has responded thousands of times to emergency responses and been responsible for tens of thousands of emergency runs I have a little knowledge and experience about what constitutes an emergency. And while there's a wide variety of things that constitute an emergency in emergency responses for, for 911, there are some things that are not an emergency. And not to be flippant about this particular case, but we would get a lot of calls at the fire department about a cat in the tree. And we would not respond lights and sirens to a cat in a tree. It's not an emergency. It's not a crisis. But when it was a response to something like a baby not breathing, well, you better believe we, we responded very quickly. So not to disrespect our public servants and part of ICE, not to disrespect the importance of border security, and not to put it on the level of a cat in a tree emergency, but House Resolution 122 yesterday supporting the president's declaration of an emergency is not an emergency. And I need to speak for the, for the constituents of the 65th district, and I would have voted no on that particular, uh, that particular resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I yield back to the lady from Jefferson 40.